This is your Barbados Today morning news update from Monday, March 28th. Barbados's voice must be at the table in key international fora. Those are the words from Prime Minister Mia Motley as she officially opened the Barbados Embassy in Abu Dhabi as part of the island's participation at the Dubai Expo 2022. She made it clear the island has made a determined effort to strengthen its foreign policy to be able to tackle critical challenges like climate change on the world stage. Your speech this evening set out with absolute clarity and focus what your mission is and what the context against which you will undertake that mission is also. I also want to thank Senior Minister Walker for leading this charge along with the PS. And why? This is historic, yes, because this is the first mission we are opening in the Middle East. But it's also historic for my government because it's the first mission that I'm actually physically opening against the backdrop of a clear change in our approach to development and foreign policy. And it is perhaps appropriate for me very briefly to indicate to you that it was very clear to our government from its election in 2018, particularly against the economic backdrop that we inherited um, our responsibilities for management of our nation. Where the only way to achieve prosperity for our people is through growth. During her trip to AUE, Motley also announced a partnership between Barbados and the X Prize Foundation, a nonprofit organization that designs and hosts public competitions intended to restore the world's corals. Motley says the initiative will help to stem the tide of destruction of the world's corals by 2030. That very shortly, a partnership between the government of Barbados and X Prize will see a commitment to working to restore the coral reefs of the world. For if we can come together and raise the 20 million US dollars necessary for the prizes, that will allow for persons to rebuild coral reefs over three hectares, according to the work that they do and across three different coral species, we believe that we can begin to stem the tide that will see the destruction of the majority of the world's coral reefs by 2030 if we don't act together as one. So I use this opportunity today to say to us, let us come together and save our planet Earth because it relies on us as human beings making those sensible choices day by day if it is going to work. In other news this Monday, former opposition leader Bishop Joseph Avali wants more details about the Capital Works projects announced by Prime Minister Mia Motley during the March 14 national budget. Speaking during the Alliance Party for Progress political meeting on Sunday, Avali expressed skepticism about the feasibility of the planned projects, citing the island's limited workforce and prevailing financial constraints. Government continues to boast, and in this budget, Ms. Morning did again, as she has done often in the past, as she tells about these capital projects that are coming down through the pipeline, and a lot of them have to do with tourism. So this hotel is going to go up there, and Sam Lords is going to uh, start back and finish by this month, and, and higher, my goodness, is is going to come on stream. How many times have we heard these things? And they are promising employment for Barbadians through this means. But they're not clear. This is private sector development largely. And a lot of it's hotel infrastructure. The government, of course, is saying that it too will put some money in the pool and do some capital projects, some more roads, address the water systems in the north now of the island, address the sewage. The government say they will do these things. They will build a, a new geriatric hospital. They will do some uh, additions to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital across the street. Or else they say they will do these things. You have to ask yourself, where is the money going to come from? 
Barbados should once again create a national bank. That's the view of APP candidate for St. Michael's Southeast, Reverend Dr. Patrick Tannis. While addressing the party's supporters during the party's political meeting at the George Lamming School on Sunday, Tannis lamented that a previous BLP administration failed the island when it allowed the Barbados National Bank to be sold back in 2003. How many of you remember the Barbados National Bank? Remember that? As an ordained minister, may the bank rest in peace because it's dead. Those of you who want tissues, who want to cry, can cry now. I permit it. None of the minutes. It's over. Who killed it? The current administration in a previous version. It dead. Barbados is the only Caribbean nation without a national bank. Barbados is the only nation that does not have a national bank to support the people of Barbados. Why? Because the bank was sold by politicians. Nobody in the ABP did it. We didn't do it. It gets sold. And let me tell you, without a national bank, in this current world that we live in, we got problems. Tanis raised concern that the island's reliance on overseas financial institutions to conduct the majority of its daily transaction leaves Barbadians at the mercy of foreign banks. Because if you're going to default on your debts and anger the banks that have determined to have wanted at that time to do business in Barbados and accept your debt, and then you default on those banks and insult them and aggravate them, what will happen is that the banks will take it out on who? On me. On all of me. On us. What are they going to try to do? They might even try and leave this place. We will suffer. The local surfing community has welcomed the return of the Surf Pro Series and the World Surf League. Speaking during a press conference at the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. headquarters in Warrens on Saturday, Chief Executive Officer Jens Trenhart said his team is looking forward to the events and the exposure the island will receive. Mishron Robinson has more. The local surfing community is gearing up for pure action on the waves with the return of the Surf Pro Series and the World Surf League Live Like Xander Junior Pro events during a press conference at the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. BTMA headquarters in Warren on Saturday. BTMA's Director of Caribbean and Latin America, Corey Garrett, said that his team is looking forward to the events and the exposure the island will have from it. Local surfing promoter Luis Venezia, who's also the father of former surfing sensation Xander Venezia, announced that the focus of the event is to put a spotlight on Barbados regarding sports tourism. Chief Executive Officer of BTMA, Jens Trenhart, said that his organization is looking forward to the boost in tourism as a result of the upcoming competitions. Um, I think surfing, especially sports tourism, is something that is not only ingrained in Barbados with, with cricket and road tennis and other things, but I think many people may not even know that um, you can surf in Barbados. And uh, I had a chat with Chelsea uh, a few weeks ago and learned a lot about surfing, but also we're looking to opening up the Latin American market. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. The Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 139 new cases, 63 males and 76 females, from the 754 tests conducted on Saturday. The cases comprised 28 persons under the age of 18 and 111 who were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 47, while 922 were in home isolation. The death toll stands at 330. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. 
Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional happenings two years into a pandemic that killed 3,731 in Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announces the lifting of most of the COVID-19 restrictions from April 4. We will, as of today, remove much of what we had in place when we were dealing with a more threatening environment in the covid Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says this country is in a far better place than it was in November, December, when hospitalizations and COVID-19 cases were showing an upward trajectory. Health officials on Saturday, including Principal Medical Officer Dr. Miriam Abdul-Richard, says hospital occupancies are the lowest it has been for quite a while. This morning, in our hospitals, there are 173 patients and zero patients in our step-down. And for the first time since April of last year, we have zero patients in step-down facilities. And this trend has been consistent over the past 10 days or so. And due to this, Dr. Rowley says on April 4th, safe zones as well as restrictions on rivers and beaches will be removed. He says a level of personal responsibility will now be needed and cautions all citizens to be vigilant. On the international front, Russian President Vladimir Putin cannot remain in power, President Joe Biden said in a fiery speech pushing the world's democracies to unite to support Ukraine. We gather details from Reuters TV. Just hours after four bombs hit Ukraine's western city of Lviv on Saturday, U.S. President Joe Biden took to the podium at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, Poland, telling the crowd that Russia's leader Vladimir Putin cannot remain in power. For God's sake! This man cannot remain power. In his fiery speech, Biden condemned Putin's month-long war in Ukraine and urged the world's democracies to unite in what he called a, quote, new battle for freedom. Let us resolve to put the strength of democracies into action to thwart the designs of, our, the designs of autocracy. Let us remember that the test of this moment is the test of all time. A White House official later said that Biden's remarks did not indicate that Washington is seeking a regime change in Russia, saying, quote, The president's point was that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. He was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.